Hello everybody, I'm Dan. In this tutorial I'm going to be talking about the fundamental data types of the C programming language. Let's go ahead and open up our web browser to my website, thegpu.com, and select a menu and C tutorials. I'm going to click on data types here. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about a variable. So a variable is a named memory location that can be assigned a value while the program is running. A data type describes the sort of data that a variable will hold. Oftentimes when learning a programming language, you'll run into the classic chicken versus egg scenario. The concept of variables and data types just happen to be exactly that. Now this tutorial will focus on what data types are while laying the groundwork for future tutorials on variables. Unlike many modern programming languages, you must manage the values stored in memory, right, random access memory, on your own. Memory man management is by far the biggest stumbling block for learning C properly. A poor understanding of memory management can lead to various serious software bugs and leaked memory. While the subject of memory management sounds complicated, if taken slowly step by step, you will understand how to master this tricky part of the C programming. Okay, let's talk about the fundamental data, data types. First one I'm going to describe is char, and that is a single characters like A, upper A, lower A, 7, uh, ampersand, um, that's not an ampersand, an and symbol, uh, plus, etc. Characters are enclosed in single quotations marks like this, right? And the next one is int. Now int are whole numbers like 2, 987, negative 45, 1 million, etc. The minimum and maximum values that can be stored in an int data type vary depending upon the C compiler and uh, the number of bits that an operating system supports, for example, 1632 or 64-bit. I just happen to be running a 64-bit system here. Okay, I'll talk about float. Now, uh, numbers with decimal points, for example, fractions essentially like 1.3, negative 9.99, etc. Now, a double is exactly like a float. Uh, only a double can hold a much broader range of floating point values. All right, let's go ahead and um, I'm going to move this off screen here and let's just get right into doing some coding here. So we'll open up our command prompt. Now, if you're new to my tutorials and you don't have it, you can right click, select new shortcut, CMD next and finish. It's just that easy. Let's open that up. First thing you want to do is type in GCC. You should see exactly this. Fatal error, no input files, compilation terminated. This means GCC is configured properly. If you get any other error message like I can't find this or this or the other, watch my tutorial on installing a C compiler, which is GCC, before continuing. CLS is clear the screen, CD space backslash. Um, make a directory using the MD command called cdemo. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. We'll change directories now to the cdemo folder. And we're going to make another directory here, and I'm just going to call this one data types. And change directories to the data types folder. And now I'm going to break with convention already here, because frankly, um, back in the day when memory was extremely limited, um, they would limit their file names to basically like eight characters and lowercase. And of course, we're still going to go with the dot C, a dot lowercase C extension on there. And that's going to require, but um, we don't really have those memory issues anymore. You know, we're talking stuff like, for example, doing two digit years so that they could save two bytes because memory used to be really, really, really expensive. Um, it's not so much anymore. You know, uh, matter of fact, it's dirt cheap. <laughs> crazy anyway amazing how things change there so I'm gonna break with convention I'm gonna call my file name data type so I'm gonna use camel casing here um, which is more of a, a modern programming language feature you know stuff like Java C sharp stuff like that um, you know camel casing describes a little bit more separates it out less cryptic than a lot of these old C things there um, so anyway um, and it'll work just fine. You have to know that C is a case sensitive language, especially, you know, doing stuff like in Unix, uh, Linux and other operating systems there too can, can vary a little bit on that. So uh, let's go ahead and enter on that. We're going to create this file here. Let's move our browser back over. We are going to cut and paste this stuff here. All right, now let's go into this. Oh wow, what did I, I cut and pasted way more than I needed to there. Jesus. 
Okay, so, um, let's make sure we save this. Uh, this is called a preprocessor directive. I won't be going over those in this tutorial. That'll be a save that for a future tutorial. This is our main function right here, our entry point for our program, and everything inside of these um, these curly braces here, basically our, our code block there. So here is the char data type, all right? And you can see I've got a comment here describing what each one of these are. So this is how we declare and initialize a variable. So the char data type in our variable name, right? And then we got equals, which is an assignment operator. And then we've got, as you can see, single quote, uppercase A, single quote. That is our character literal. And then, of course, followed by our semicolon, which ends a particular statement of code. Okay. Next one here, int data type, I, variable name, assignment operator, and this is an int literal. Okay, an int literal is just basically, we are just basically typing these in, and this is literally 4567 is what we're saying there. It's, it doesn't vary in any particular way on this particular thing here. Okay, and I'll go over that in future tutorials a little bit more in detail there. So float data type, variable name F, assignment operator, float literal value. Double data type, variable name, assignment operator, a double literal value. Okay, now printf is one of these functions that's included in what's called the standard IO header file here. Um, and I'll be going over a lot of that in the future tutorials. You don't need to, don't worry about printf at this point, so I'll be going over that later. Um, so basically then we're going to, printf just basically displays the output to the console, in other words, the command prompt there. So we'll be displaying letter A equals, and we've and basically we're passing in letter A and then we've got these various different percent signs in here and the letter that follows the percent sign has absolutely nothing to do with uh, uh, well it has everything to do with the data type that you're passing over but we'll go over that in a later date there all right and then of course return zero is where we terminate the program there so let's go ahead and save this let's clear our screen let's type in uh, GCC and data types.c and I want the output file to be the same thing, data types, right? And let's compile that. Let's do a directory here and we've got our data types.exe. Let's go ahead and run it. And as you can see, the letter A is A, I, four, five, six, seven, F equals one, two, three point nine 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 point zero zero one, right? Not quite exactly the uh, output we were expecting and that's because floats in C and aren't necessarily 100% precise so you have to do a little bit of finagling and I'll go over that in future tutorials there but basically this is how we can output those values there so you can see our double is basically 1 million point zero 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 seven so anyway that pretty much concludes this tutorial I just want to leave you with a couple of final thoughts here um, so basically you should have an idea of what the four fundamental data types are now. The concept of variables and what they can represent is a fairly complicated subject in C programming. So take your time and make sure that you understand each concept along the way and you will be uh, just fine. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.